a really interesting period of aviation is the 1960s to the 70s that a lot of people sleep on, but Cold War enjoyers are all about. It's an interesting time period, and the way I think about it is in three main buckets. One, there were different design philosophies that were competing between the Soviets, Americans, and Europeans. New systems like radars were being introduced to planes, but they were still very crude, so they gave situational awareness, but in a more limited way compared to modern systems. Lastly, the fights are mostly dominated by rear aspect missiles and crude Fox ones. When I have thought about Cold War combat flight sims, I have generally put DCS as the only option. But very recently, I was reintroduced to War Thunder Air Sim, and I think there are some interesting things to talk about that may not be obvious to some. In a weird way, War Thunder offers a unique glimpse into this era. Today, we talk about the forgotten game mode, Air Sim, in War Thunder. It was interesting to rediscover, so we will go through my thoughts as we dive into some fights that I had. If this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay, so if you knew that, please subscribe. I thought the best way to talk about air sim is to really focus on the pacing of the game mode. In DCS, there's a lot of competition between the servers and players want to play on the populated servers. So just based on player density, things get really hectic. There's a lot of people in Enigma's Cold War or on Growling Sidewinder or all the other servers and things just feel really congested. Here, we're gonna have a very simple interception. There's a strike fighter coming to hit one of our bases. Players are incentivized to hit these things because they want to grind lions. So in a weird way, the grind is actually incentivizing good behavior of doing air to ground. And I'm protecting one of the objectives. I am in a MiG-21S. I get a lock with my radar and I'm holding my fire to make sure that I can get a good angle to get this missile off. You see the mock cone on him, so he's going quite fast. And we're going to see if this missile can make it. It is going, uh, you know, downhill, so to speak, and we're able to connect. So very simple little engagement here. Uh, game mode incentivizing people to do air to ground and also to protect. Here we're going to get to a little bit more of a traditional furball. And there's a big fight happening on the coast and I'm coming in low. Want to stay off radar, not to scare people's uh, RWRs. And not seeing anything on radar because of the ground clutter. War Thunder surprisingly does an amazing job with radar modeling. And get a lock and we find out that this is a friendly. So one tricky thing about War Thunder Sim is that uh, because of so many planes they have modeled, it's not super easy to tell who's who. And then we're able to find out that he's friendly, so this one must be enemy. And we're flat turning. And again, notice that like, you know, there aren't 30 planes all merging at once in this area. It's, you know, it's kind of a small intimate fight. He fires a missile and it misses, it looks like. So he's really trying to gun for this kill and I'm just trying to connect or get closer so I can, can connect with him. So flares and chaff are really powerful in this game, and some could say maybe they're too strong, but I actually think that because they're so strong, it actually makes it more interesting because it's not like just getting a simple lock and connecting. And we get, you know, some shoulder shooting from both of us, and we get the kill. So... Oop, look behind me, and we saw something. So out of all of the air sim fights that I've had, this is probably one of the most hectic ones in terms of like congestion. So this shows like how, air quotes, how bad it can be. Uh, I think this is actually pretty reasonable. When I think about how these fights play out in War Thunder air sim, surprisingly, it actually reminds me a lot of Alpin's Cold War server and DCS. Small, intimate fights, fights that play over a long time, and a lot of ambushing too, because there aren't 50 players in a lobby. There's like 10 or 12 sometimes maybe up to 14. So it's actually a pretty good size. So I'm holding onto an R3S that I have selected. And I get a good tone, but the angle's not really there yet. And I'm closing in with him really quickly. This guy has, it looks like bags or something. He's really slow. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect. So, simple little fight. Nothing super special, but goes to show uh, the pacing of the mission. You're not getting third party here by like a million planes or shot, you know, by random missiles from other incoming planes. Here, uh, we're into a, into a different mission. 
Uh, I thought this was actually a really interesting fight. So I have been patrolling and trying to bar cap. Um, I see, I think this is a Mirage 3. And I really screw the pooch here. I Not only do I overshoot, but then I overshoot and I pull into his gun sight, which is so bad. So now I'm, you know, went from ambushing to ruining the ambush and then having to fight from a really weird position. So one thing that we'll say, or that I'll say about uh, War Thunder is the flight models. The flight models are a little bit more generic in the game. And I think this uh, is a very fair representation of it. So I'm flat turning at 470-ish KPH and my flaps are at takeoff. And this guy, I believe is also has Delta Wing. So I'm kind of, I don't really know this matchup. I think it's a Mirage 3. I don't really know who's gonna flat turn better or not. So I'm just going off of what I'm seeing and reacting. And so far, I'm able to stay out of the gun sight. I started this position, or this fight, in a really bad position. So the fact that he's not directly behind me and has guns on me is looks like so far I'm it's it's moving in the right direction. So I'm getting really slow, and I'm starting to worry that like, am I going to fall out of the sky going this slow? My speed's in the top left. He looks like he's kind of dropping out of the sky too. So I'm going to have to change something up. 300 now sub 350 kph. But it does look like I am wrapping around on him, so I'm just gonna have to keep this up. And I open it up a little bit, let the plane breathe, speed picks up. So I went from 350, now 440. Now it looks like maybe I was better at flying at the lower speeds because he looked like he was dropping out of the sky faster than I was. Uh, luckily, you know, early Cold War missiles, they're jank. I don't even have flares on this plane, and that missile wasn't able to connect, which is great. So, picking a lot more speed. And then this is where the fight's gonna get interesting, because in my mind, I was thinking to myself, like, I don't wanna just flat turn. This is gonna get boring. And we're gonna see what happens. Also notice that we have done maybe like four or five circles and to go back to what I said earlier, we haven't been third party yet. This is like a very small intimate fight. So I cut back and I'm now gonna to try to scissor to get an overshoot. And scissoring, scissoring with two delta wings, always fun. Okay, so wasn't able to get nose on, but now the whole fight has changed where I'm just gonna try to continue to scissor. I do think I have, probably have more thrust in this guy because it looks like I'm able to get like much more, a lot more vertical than he can. And I just have to make sure I don't hit the ground when I'm doing this. And the other issue too is when I'm diving down to try to get a nose on him, he's pulling up. So he's like slowing down a lot of his horizontal movement. And then I, I'm, we're like kind of overshooting back and forth on each other. Other tricky thing about these old MiGs, because War Thunder has so many planes modeled, the MiG-21S uh, doesn't really have an onboard gun. It's On this one, it's a gun pod, so the gun is like sitting on my belly. So it's really tricky to get shot sometimes, because it's uh, if you're used to DCS only, you're going you're gonna to shoot way below your target. So now I'm going 320. I have slowed myself down significantly, and I have let him shoot out past me. And again, same thing, he does the same thing to me. He goes vertical and I'm gonna slip out past him. So I'm using flaps when I'm diving and then getting rid of my flaps when I'm climbing. Okay, now we're gonna try to get a shot here. So close, so close. And I really straightened out for that, so now I've really shot out. Luckily, he didn't nose over. Quick enough. Oof, big miss. But now we're in a just a much better position than in general, than from before. And just have to keep being patient. And we get a hit. Really good fight by this guy. Uh, you know, of course, I screwed up tremendously at the beginning, but it was pretty interesting uh, as we went back and forth. And again, very small, intimate fight. 
not interrupted and there was like, you know, 10 people on the server. My hand was actually so tired I actually ended up crashing uh, from that fight. Now that we've seen a few fights, you can kind of get the idea of how it plays out. I just want to make some quick points as a takeaway because I don't really feel like making this a super long-winded video. There's a huge variety in planes, weapons, and systems in this game. While the flight models are a little bit more simple, the fact that there's a huge variety of playable options does make for different fights that you just can't experience anywhere else. The game mode is also really interesting. The pursuit for the grind does push people to do air to ground and to hit objectives. This then makes for intercepting a really common thing. It's not just pure airquake, which adds for variety. Additionally, the size, pacing, and number of players in a sim lobby is actually just kind of really good. The early to mid Cold War stuff fits so well in air sim. You get fights in a reasonable time, you don't get third party constantly, and there is enough of a play area to do actual hunting of targets. All in all, I've been just kind of really pleased with it, and it's something that I've been sleeping on. And I would suspect that some of you on this channel, not all of you, but some of you, could actually have some fun in every once in a while to kind of just break up your every day and to give some more variety in the games that you're playing. I hope you guys found the video interesting. I just want to remind everyone that I don't really associate my identity to one game. I really think that with how the games are today, you have to sort of pick and choose the game depending on what sort of experience you want to get. While War Thunder is not the game I play every day, there is some uniqueness to the game and with their really neat IR modeling, the wide breadth of planes, their decent radar modeling and great spotting system all combined with the enduring conflict scenario does make for an interesting experience when you're in the mood for it, especially for the early to mid Cold War fights. Let me know what your experience has been with AirSim in the comments below. If you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing as it is the best way to help this channel. Thank you.